There we go. All right. Turn my phone off. Yeah, I already have my phone. I don't know where it is. <laughs> it's over yonder. I need to put on Do Not Disturb. You hear that, Gidget? He doesn't know where his phone is. Hello, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness. Scoop, scoop, scoop. Here comes we the have rain. To... Oh, it is. <clears throat> we have to move dogs so we can have a seat. That's right. What did you find? Probably a piece of popcorn. <laughs> I don't know what she got. She was proud of it, though. Mm. What's happening, everybody? This is Jason Brooke over here at Cock Hill Farm, and this is a live tonight. We weren't for sure if we were going to be able to do one or not because we're pretty tired after yesterday and getting in late yesterday and having to play catch up today and get a video ready to go out tomorrow. But we decided we was going to go on and do it, and here we are. Here we are. That's right. Sitting on the couch upstairs in the – Barn Dominium with a little rain coming down on yeah. our rooftop. It's been raining pretty much all day today. It has, and yeah. I just looked at the radar, and it looks like it's about to be gone. Okay, good. So, it's been a nice, steady rain. Yeah. It hasn't been any big downpour, so just, just a good soaking rain. Finally, one of those. Not, not a storm or bad weather or nothing like that. Just rain, which I like. You know, we took a trip down south yesterday to Milton, Florida, where we um, spoke at a homestead Gulf Coast meetup. The home, yeah, the Gulf Coast homestead meetup and had an awesome time. But I found out last night, right when we left, that there was a tornado down around the Mobile area. Really? Yeah, so there was some bad weather. We never saw any bad weather We at got all. out just in time, I yeah. think, and... We kind of were ahead of the weather the whole way home. Yeah, we, we, we never had. I mean, it sprinkled yeah, a time or two, rained. but I didn't even have to hardly turn on the windshield mm -hmm. wipers. So it was a good drive. It was a good drive. It was a good day yesterday. We had a uh, awesome time. Got to see some of our friends that we don't see very often. Uh, we got to see Daniel and DJ and their family, Arms family, and got to hang out with them for a little bit. That's right. For, for a little, little bit, bit yeah. I was able to meet DJ for the first time. That's right. I had met Daniel previously, but DJ was not um, at the event that I met Daniel at. So yesterday was the first first meetup with DJ, and I must say she's just as wonderful in person as she is <laughs> on camera. They are. They're, they're awesome folks. Got to see Miss Ann Dale. I see Miss Ann just uploaded a reel. Did she? From our little dance. <laughs> did she put it up there? She did. She just did it. <laughs> she said that we were such good sports and she loved us. And I commented back and I said, we love you too, Miss Ann. We love Miss Ann. And then got to see um, our other friends over there, the um, Dusty Goat and Hidden Oaks. And oh gosh, some of my mind's going crazy right now. Um, Play, crazy Lizzie's goat farm. Crazy Lizzie's goat farm. Um, well, our friends that we see a little more often, oh, yeah. which is Tracy and Jean from Just Dig It Farms. Mm -hmm. um, Jacqueline, Zach, and Eleanor from Head Family Farm. Um, uh, Nick and Zoe. Zoe from Chestnut Hills yep. Farmstead. Um, must give a shout out to Miss Sue Slaughter. Oh, yeah, Miss Sue Slaughter. Um I don't want to offend anybody, but I'm going to call Sue, our number one fan. Ann Dale's on here. Hey, Ann. <laughs> hey, Ann. <laughs> but uh, Miss Sue, she's, she's, she's a big fan, and she always tries to come to every event that we have. That's right. And um, she lives down in, in Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida. So that was quite a drive for her. It was. Uh, our friends from Perry Hill. That's right. Perry Hill Farm down in Dothan, Alabama. And we got to meet the Stivers for the first time. Yes. Yep. Met the Stivers. We'd never met them. Um, very nice people. Just, very nice people. Everybody, I mean, we can't say enough about all these families. It just seems like we're all like-minded and just we're we're all this, kind of semi the same. Yeah. We have the same, same mindset, so... 
Yeah, it was it was, it was a lot of fun yesterday. Those those things are exhausting. They really are. They wear you down. But at the same time, it is so much fun, it and is. we have such a good time There's meeting Sue. me. Hey, Sue. Is Miss Sue's <laughs> on there? Yeah. Meeting all of our viewers and fans and audience, and it just it's just such a good good time and meeting friends that we don't see very often i yeah. always enjoy hearing different stories from people you know where they're from of course and then everybody's got a story and we're limited to time but just not tonight i don't mean that but i mean when you meet somebody right you you, you don't want to stop once they start telling that story it's just it's so heartwarming to me to hear everybody's different background that I just wish we had days to sit and visit with everybody. <laughs> we do. We do. It's uh, it's just so interesting and just, God, I love it. I, I love, I love the meetups. I really do. Yes. Yes. I really I do, do. I do too. Um, we did have to get up pretty early yesterday morning cause we drove down just for the day. We did. Um, Mary Carl did go. Mm -hmm. A lot of people said they didn't see her in the pictures and she, was running around doing this, that, and the other. But Mary Carl did go with us. She did go with us. And she has, you know, groups of friends that she doesn't see very often. And then and then new new friends that That's she right. meets. And so usually the the kids all get together and they do their own thing. So Yeah, last night we took a quick picture with um, the arms family as we were headed out of the restaurant that we ate at and everybody commented where's me carl y'all are missing me carl but she had already gotten in the car so well she had baby cockatiels with her yesterday she's got a pair of baby cockatiels that have to be hand fed every three to four hours and so and they got to stay in the incubator that's right so she has this little bitty incubator i don't know if y'all can even hear us with this rain she's got this little bitty incubator that was plugged up at the restaurant <laughs> that was that had a car charger with it too and so she had put it in the car and was plugging it in the car charger and getting it ready for us to go on the trip when we took that picture. Can y'all hear us? Should we move it closer? I don't think that's going to do much good. Okay. Yeah. Can y'all hear us or? Um, the rain is coming down. The rain is coming down. I just said it's been a nice steady rain without it being heavy and then it's it's heavy. They say they can hear us. Okay, so. good. Can y'all hear the rain? <laughs> Oh, me. Um, we're going to do a video. I think it's going to go out on this Thursday. Uh -huh. And it's going to be about the cockatiels. I see okay. some people are asking, where did you get the cockatiels? We have kind of a, a sto an interesting story behind the cockatiels that Mary Carl wants to share with everybody. So um, just know that that video will be coming out on Thursday. Okay, the cockatiel video. That's our plan anyway. I got you. We should have videoed it before now because they are getting a little bit older. They're looking like birds now. They're not looking like aliens before. They look like aliens, y'all. They were they, baby birds are not cute. I'm going to tell you. They're some just not. are. Some are. But <laughs> these are not. For the most part, they're not. <laughs> they, they, they do look like aliens. Mm. Everybody says they can hear the rain, but they can hear us too. So Good. that's all we need to know. Um. What else? Mildred's birthday. Mildred's birthday. Mildred had a great birthday. Mildred uh, didn't get to go with us yesterday. She was kind of disappointed. <laughs> but we told her, you know, maybe she could hitch ride to, to Oklahoma if we go back to that event. She, she wanted to fly in an airplane. And... <laughs> she would have to buy her three seats. <laughs> <laughs> or her own private plane. How about That's that? Right. Yeah. Oh, Miss Mildred. Yeah, so. What you trying to read some of the? Are you reading some of the comments over there? They love the sound of the rain. Yeah, we do too. It's gonna make us fall asleep here in a minute. The dogs are out. Believe it or not. That's I don't unusual. know what's wrong with Gidget because she's out like quite a bit. She's here. asleep, and that yeah. doesn't happen very often. Hey, you know what? What? We haven't talked about something that's very evident from looking at this video. What's that? Our shirts. Oh yeah, the uh, <laughs> our new our new shirt design is okay, out. Okay, so I must scoot up so you can see. Oh, sorry, people. <laughs> well, that's not helping, is it? Mm -mm. 
Y'all look at all the animals. I think they're all on there. From cockatiels to pigeons to goats, these shirts are awesome. It's my favorite one. This is your favorite shirt? This is my favorite I shirt. Like it too. Jason has one on as well. And you see mine has white writing. His has the black writing. Mm -hmm. And they are up on our website. They are up on our website, uh, cockillform.com. And um, we're working on something else that you guys have been asking for for years. Not just here oh, recently. Oh, okay. I'm talking about for years. And I was it's in... It's in progress, and uh, hopefully hopefully it works out. And if it does, it will be for a limited quantity, I think is what they're telling us. But, y'all, we may actually finally have calendars this year. Calendars! Fingers crossed it works out. But I think that's one of the most requested things that I've ever seen, and is, is calendars. And so uh, we've been working, working, and it's hard, it was hard to find somebody that does calendars. Well, um, that, you, that, that will handle it all, and you know the shipping and all that, all that force. And uh, Jacqueline over at Head Family Farm, she's been doing this, working her tail off for us. And it looks like the calendars may come out. I hope so. Over I two. hope so. I think it's an excellent idea. Um, We've got the pictures picked out. Yep. So the ball is rolling. It's just a matter of finalizing all the details. And as soon as that happens, we will let you guys know. We will let know. you know. Or either sign up for our newsletter. If you go to our website, cockyoform.com, it'll pop up and say, join the cock squad. And uh, check that out. And if you put your email in there and you guys, whoever the newsletter usually gets stuff a little bit before the live comes out. Because if uh, something comes out two days from now, it'll be, you know, a few days. So usually if you get the newsletter, you'll get information a little bit quicker than everybody else. That's not on the newsletter. It's like the Cog Hill inside. <laughs> That's right. The inside edition. The, the secret. The inside edition. The secret information. Yeah, the secret information. So I, I hope everything works yeah. out. Uh, I think it will. I really I think do. So I think it's going to work out. And, um, and Fingers crossed. I think it's going to work out. Yeah. Speaking of working out, how are you curtains? Oh, I thought you were going to say we were fixing to start working out. I wasn't up for that. I mean, Daniel and DJ, they look so fit. And I know they're they, CrossFit they, now. Well, that's what I was going to say. I know they're working out. Yeah. But please don't sign me up. <laughs> I got enough work to do here on the farm, much less to add CrossFit to that. Um, how are my curtains? How are your curtains? Y'all, my curtains upheld the day of us not being here. So we were gone yesterday, and then I even mentioned it to you. I said, I don't know if it was on our way back or if we were, I can't remember when it was. No, said, somebody commented to us while we were speaking, did your curtains make it? That's what it was. It was a question. And it was about 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon, yes. and my wheels started turning, and I thought to myself, <laughs> did they? Because we, we left, and the dogs can go in and out through the doggy door, and they're, they're potty trained, so... We had them closed off. There's really nothing they could actually get into except your curtains. Yeah. Um, and I say dogs. It's dog with a just a G, no S. That just does a all G the in trouble. the beginning, too, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, she, she Gidget is not a puppy. She's three. Uh, three. Mm -hmm. Three. She's three years old. But if you guys saw the reel where Gidget got my kitchen towel and took it out the doggy door, mm -hmm. it kind of made us start to wonder if she might yes. think the curtains were a kitchen towel. It really did. Because so, they look very similar, too. Well, they do. <laughs> and they hang down to the floor. And I've never had any curtains <laughs> that the dogs have been exposed to. And I say dogs with an S because, you know, Arlo might get an idea to start playing. They might play tug of war. Who knows? But, um... They they really did a good job with leaving my curtains alone. Yeah, they did do a good job. There's they have Gidget has not sniffed out the curtains whatsoever. Only the dish towel that hangs on the dishwasher. That's the only thing she goes look, after. Look, look. After she took my favorite dish towel, yeah. I haven't hung it back on the dishwasher. <laughs> and that's that's the end of it. The dish towel sits yeah. on top of the countertops. Yeah. 
Yes, you. <laughs> On top of the countertops. So this little thing won't decide it's a tug-of-war toy and take it outside. This morning, I went to take care of my Rhode Island Red hens that are still in the incubator in the garage. And I did look over, mm -hmm. and Jason has a brace that he wears on his arm for carpal tunnel. Mm -hmm. Is that what you? Is that how you say it? And they did take it outside. And it was on the kitchen table. And I said they. It was on the kitchen table. I said they because you don't know who did that. <laughs> you do not know who did that. But it did not have any holes in it. It was intact. So she knew that she was not. <laughs> she didn't treat <laughs> it like a cutting dish eyes at you. Yeah, I see her cutting her eyes at me. She says she did not mess it up, <laughs> Daddy. She doesn't mess your things up, just her mama's, because she knows I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything. I'm oh, gonna... Gidget. Roll my eyes and keep going. Oh, Gidget. We do have a big week this week. Uh, I mean, this is big week this week. Number one. Yeah. Number one. The cabinet maker sent Brooke a text and said he's coming tomorrow or Tuesday. Got to get that right? He said Monday or Tuesday. So. And he sent me a picture of the doors. So he's got the doors. They're ready. They're painted. They weren't painted, they weren't painted yet. in the okay. picture. And okay. I think that's why he said Monday or Tuesday. Because okay. this was Thursday when I got, I got the text. I got you. So um, we're, we're, we're thinking, no. No, Gidget. Gidget. It's a little piece of paper. Uh -uh. She Little piece of paper, and she's trying to get it. <laughs> um, Gidget's a Pomeranian. I saw that. Okay. We're fingers crossed we're going to get the cabinet doors this week. That would be huge. So that's happening. What else? Well, I was going to say, I'm so confident that the cabinet doors are coming that I emptied at least 12 boxes of you kitchen did. stuff today. You did. I ran the dishwasher for some things that have been stored. You know how when something's been stored, it just gets dusty. Right. And, um, I didn't want to wash all that stuff by hand. I felt like it needed to be sanitized. So I ran the dishwasher four times right. today. And it's running right now. Mm -hmm. With... Um, cookware and things that I've had stored away. And I'm going to tell y'all, I felt like a kid at Christmas. <laughs> when I was opening those boxes, I was just a grinning. I was looking at it like, oh, I forgot I had that. I forgot. You forgot you I had forgot it. I forgot I had it. But a bad thing did happen when I was opening one of the boxes. So I'm setting all my stuff out. You know, I'm, I'm grinning. I'm looking at it. I'm grinning. I had a lid sitting on the island top. And I went to pick up one of my pots and I swiped the lid off on accident and it hit the concrete and it went into a million quadrazillion pieces. It did. I mean, you were upstairs and you were like, what was that? Oh, it did. And Jason immediately came downstairs very quickly and got the dogs out, thankfully, because we didn't want any hurt paws. Yeah. And um, I was able to get it, get it all cleaned out. I hung my lip down all pouty and Mary Carl and Jason said, look, mama, we just get you a new lid. It's just a, just a, just a lid. And they don't understand that while it's just a lid, it was a lid that fit three different pots. And I don't even know if I can find another we lid. We can find another lid. I'm the, confident we can find a, a lid for a pot, a there, pan. I'm it's, confident. It's a special lid. We'll find it. So I did keep the ring. Mm -hmm. The glass is gone, of course. But I kept the ring and I said, I'm going to take it with me the next time I get to go somewhere and see if I can't find that right size. We'll I measured it. it and it's not quite 12 inches. It's less than 12 inches. Mm -hmm. But they may call it 12 inches. They may call yeah. it 12 inches. I bet they do. But I'm going to take that ring with me because it specifically you. fits three pots and they're all the same brand. I got you. I don't know the brand, but it's the brand. <laughs> <laughs> also... I'm telling y'all, this is a big week this week. If everything falls through, this is like the biggest week we've had at the house since Brant the Builder's been here. That's true. Um, The concrete guys started Thursday. Did I get that right? When I Thursday? think so. No, 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 no. They started um, Monday. Monday. They started Monday to start the, do the driveway or the... The front of the garage, we're going to get that concrete, and the rest of the driveway is going to be 
gravel. And so they started Monday and then they were actually here yesterday putting the forms up while we were gone to Florida for the meetup. And we came back and the forms are in. Everything looks great. And they're supposed to pour concrete tomorrow. Tomorrow morning at like six um, thirty. Is that what time it is? Well, you know, they start they before start daylight. Early. Yeah. Um, so as hard as our ground is, we shouldn't have a problem. We poured the slab, I believe it was, for Mama's house. They poured the slab. Well, <laughs> we didn't do nothing. <laughs> we had them come pour yeah, the slab. That's right. When it had rained a lot harder. Oh, than he's this. not worried about rain. That's what I'm saying. Mm -mm. I mean, there shouldn't be any issues with them getting in and out. And no. that's what they're worried about. Oh, no, no, no. There won't be any issues. Our, our, our place drains super well. We don't have mud or anything like that. So I'm not worried about that at all. And I know Fernando's not. And I moved all the cars. Which is my moved. mom's car, my car, yep. and Jason's truck, Paw mm -hmm. truck. We moved them all out of the way. We got everything ready. And good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, they're going to be pouring concrete in the morning. Not only we got that's that's number two. Number three is, is Mr. Greg is coming, I think, Wednesday to start on the rest of the driveway. Well, he did say midweek. Midweek. So I'm hoping midweek's Tuesday. <laughs> But I'm thinking That's early mid. Yeah, I'm thinking it's probably <laughs> Wednesday or Thursday. That's right. But um, hey, at least things are falling into place. Oh man, if the once the driveway, that's that's exciting because this is something that uh y'all, we got ooh. home last night. We got home at eleven fifteen. Mm -hmm. So we've been driving on this through the pasture, basically, is yeah. what it is. I yeah. mean, it's not a driveway right now. It's really not a driveway. It's just through the pasture. Through the pasture. And it's a makeshift road mm -hmm. with no gravel no nothing it's just just mm -hmm. there so eleven fifteen last night we're coming in and it's you know it's always bumpy it's always been bumpy and i told looked at jason and i said i don't think we're gonna have a bumpy driveway next weekend fingers crossed <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> so that that's a big big week all all three of those things are happening so yeah, if um if everything falls into place like it's supposed to, mm -hmm. oh my gracious, it's gonna start to look like a finished house. It will start. What is she doing? Oh Gidget loves to suck on blankets when she gets sleepy. And Gidget is pulling the blanket across the floor that we have up here that Mary Carl and Jason use when they're watching TV, trying to Look, she's going to get it again, so Jeez. she can so she can suck on it and oh my gracious. get herself to sleep with her pacifier. Um, <laughs> hmm. I was just thinking of something. You lost your train of thought. Uh, we still don't have a handrail. That's that. Um, I think we talked about that last week, but uh, we're we're not be getting a handrail from that gentleman. So we got to <laughs> find somebody else to do our handrail for us, and so. Uh, yeah, I, I talked to somebody uh -oh, that had the same issue with the with the guy, and she ended up getting her deposit back. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping that I can do the same. Yep. And then uh, we're going to find somebody else to do the handrail for us. What's happening with the pond? Um, well, we got some rain going, so this, this will be a good sign, but it's not going to be enough rain to fill it up. We're waiting on Mother Nature to fill the pond up for us. Well, we said earlier that we had not gotten much rain. But I went around the back of the house and got the tractor earlier. Yeah. It was still daylight. And you were editing a video. Uh -huh. So I go around the back of the house and you can see the pond from the back of the house. Well, obviously I look over and it has a lot more water in it than it did yesterday. Oh, good. So we maybe did get some. So I'm think thinking that, that, that even that. though it's been a drizzle, a gradual rain all day, that it's been enough to add up a little. And the sun's, the, the, we've had a lot of cloud cover and the weather's cooling off a little bit. So we're not having the big, big heat, summertime heat. The evaporation's probably not happened right. like it was. But um, I really could tell a noticeable difference in the amount of water that was in the pond. Good. I really could. I had to go look myself, and you got well, me curious. You're not going to see right now. <laughs> no, I'm going to see nothing right no, now. No, you're yeah. not. But I'm telling yeah. you, I was in. I was impressed looking over, just not thinking we got much rain, and we did. We did. Good. So, 
Good. I'm going to go check it out. You, you you're not going to go tonight. <laughs> you're not going to be able to I'll see anything. I'll take the flashlight out there and go look. <laughs> you're going to get me to ride you over there on a the tractor, aren't you? Oh, you can man. get in the bucket. I'll let you ride. <laughs> That'll work. What else? Um, I just had something. I was fixing to say something, too, and you start talking about the pond. Get a sidetrack. Well, oh, you know, I always like to talk about last week's videos and Go what ahead. happened. So, um, Mildred's birthday was fresh on my list. Uh -huh. um, you can't remember what else I can't did. remember the other ones. <laughs> I cannot we remember. We did Mildred's. Oh, I had the um, the water leak. Ooh. I had the water leak with, uh, in Nuggets Pen. Yes. That um that I fixed pretty promptly. We haven't got the water bill yet. I'm I'm a little worried about the water bill. I am. I don't know how long it's been leaking. It's not a clue. Well, Mama came over that morning because yeah. obviously Jason had to cut the cut the water off. Right. And um, she came over and she was like, "Y'all, I don't have any water." <laughs> and because <laughs> I, I didn't tell her ahead of time that Jason, I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. But I just didn't think about telling her that we had to cut the water off. So um, I said, "It's okay. Jason's working on it. We're gonna have it up and running shortly." Mm -hmm. Um, but. I tell you the best part that the best part of that fix was being able to go down to the little country store and get the parts that you needed and saved yourself about mm, over an hour. I would oh, say at least an hour because it would have taken me 25 minutes to go where, well, 20 minutes to go where I needed to go. And if they didn't have what I needed, then I'd take another 10 minutes. So just driving wise, if everything went perfectly, and 40 to 45 minutes, not including me having to go in and find the stuff I needed. And this little country store is like a mile down the road. It really is. And it's um, it, it's an awesome store. I tell you how I figured out when we first moved here that they had some oddball stuff that you wouldn't really see at a convenience store. Not our typical convenience store right. anyway. Um, we had bought the Bush Hog. Yeah, that's right. And the bush hog did not come with oil in the gearbox. Yep. So we needed a specific kind of gear oil. Mm -hmm. And I stopped in that little store. And y'all, it was an oddball oil. And they had and it. And they had it. I think Mr. Greg told us that that store Somebody told had, us. Had, had, you know, a little bit of this. stuff, you know, for, they got chainsaw bar oil. They got and I bought it there too. Stuff. Um, it's just stuff that you would need if you were in the country on a farm, <laughs> you know, like emergency type That's stuff. That's right. That's right. But we we um and it's really, not and it's not a big store. You would think that it would be overly costly as well, yeah. but it's not. Uh -uh, it's it's not. reasonably yeah. priced. It um what you doing? I was reading that. Um that lady lives near us, and I was wondering oh. if she was going to say that she liked that store, store. as well. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they got a little bit of everything, and it sure does save you a lot of time from going all the way to town. I will tell you, it was my first time going in there, and the gentleman, and I think he's the owner. It was an older gentleman. He was actually standing outside in just just big smile on his face. Yeah. Standing outside, and it's got the old gas pumps. It's an old store. And there was somebody getting gas there. And then I walked, as soon as I walked, as I was walking in, he wanted to know, could he help me? And I told him what I needed. And he was like, well, come on, I'll show you where the plumbing stuff is. And then um, he showed me the plumbing. And so I picked out what I needed. And then I was standing in line and there were three people in front of me mm -hmm. in line. Mm -hmm. Were and they buying plumbing stuff? No, too? they weren't buying plumbing okay. stuff. But the three people in front of me, he knew but all three of them's names. And it was like, well, how is your sister doing? She is she is she out of the hospital? I mean, it was so awesome. Yeah, the, I, I feel kind of strange the times that I do go in there because they don't know me from Adam's house right. cat. Because I, I have only been in there a couple of handfuls mm -hmm. of time. But these people have been going there, you know, since they were knee high to a grasshopper, right. and he knows every he knows everybody <laughs> in there. <laughs> It so, was so awesome. So maybe one day I need to say, hey, I'm Brooke. Yeah. I'm Brooke, and you are? And then, you know, when we come in there, I can say, well, hey, Mike, or whatever, whatever his, his name, name is. is. Yeah. And we can we can carry on that way. It is just it's just a so... It's just, and, you know, it kind of reminds me of my childhood because we had a store like that 
nearby and it kind of grew because that, that area kind of grew pretty well that big, road is kind of a well-traveled road now. it is and, and but when i was growing up there that area wasn't that popular no you could ride your four-wheeler there we could ride our bikes over yeah. there yeah and it was a, it was a little convenience store and they had you know little odds and ends of this and that and just that little candy section oh my god and their, their candy section reminded me of it and uh, yeah. yeah, he came home and um, <laughs> I had a flashback. I, I was, was outside. I was six years old again when I went in there. I was outside when he came home. Yeah. But I came in, he was working on the plumbing, and I look on the island to find this thing of sweet tarts. Yep, giant and sweet I'm tarts. Like, what in the <laughs> world? I mean, they were there were these big Chewy sweet tart. I hadn't had one probably since I was six years old. I swear I hadn't. And he knows that I'm not a candy person. Yeah. But he did save one for Mary Crawl. I did. Speaking of candy. Yes. So at our event yesterday in Milton, Florida. Ooh, yeah. There were vendors. And Jason and I did not get to visit many of the vendors. No, we didn't. But... He and I were looking for somewhere to eat, and we were back in the back area of the what was held at a fairground, and that's where the food trucks were. Was in the back area mm -hmm. of the whole event. There was a lot of vendors there. It too. was a lot yeah, of it vendors. It was a lot of vendors. And I kind of hate that I didn't get to, you know, go and check them out. But right. that's my fault. Um, so one of them caught our eye. No, no, no. no. She. Didn't know who we were last year at the event. That's right. She came up to us. She came up to us. She did not know who we were last year. And she I guess she saw people. I, I don't know how she figured out. She knew who we were. She looked well, at she us. She became a, 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 a viewer of our show. And so this year she said she was ready for us because yeah. she loves our videos. Gosh, is it still in the car? What's that? That's what we got. It's got to be. I didn't get it out. It's got to be still in the car. You had to have gotten it out because it's not in it there. It was 1130 last night when we came in, baby. <laughs> I was dead tired. I was going to show it. Well, go get it. You I don't know it. where it is. It's, it's not in the, in the car. I put two car. things in the car. So I'll so. go get it. Okay, so Jason is pouring down rain. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's in there. So um, the lady, the sweet lady came up to us and told us that she had been watching us ever since last year and that uh, she she had really enjoyed the show, this, that, and the other. And I said, well, what are you doing here? And she said, well, I've got a little booth set up over there. Well, obviously, when somebody speaks to us, I said, well, I want to check it out. I go over there and I say, well, what, you know, what do you have? And she said, well, I have these, um, my friend here is making these homemade, oh, my goodness, Gidget. homemade goodies and it was like brownies and cupcakes and you know things like that but what caught my eye was there was a a display of all this pretty colored stuff and i was like what is that and she said well that's that's my freeze-dried candy i said freeze-dried candy she said yeah i said Oh my gracious, we were just about to try freeze drying candy when we had to move. And we brought our, of course, Harvest Right freeze dryer over to Jason's parents' house and stored it. Um, so there was no way for us to freeze dry while we were in the process of building a house. But we did want to try to freeze dry candy. So when she said that, it just lit me up. I was like, what all do you have? So she started at the top and she started showing me. She said, well, I have freeze dried candy corn. I love candy corn. I have freeze dried. Um, I did have some bit of honey that was freeze dried. Those are the little candies that um, have been around forever. She said, but I sold all of those. I have these. They're Jolly Ranchers. They're freeze-dried. I have these Skittles. Well, Jason, of course, after, you know, what I just told you about him getting the sweet tarts, he loves sour stuff. So I said, Jason, I said, which ones are the most sour? And she said, probably the lime. Oh. So I decided I wanted to buy it. He was with me, but I said, let's get Jason a, a thing of lime Skittles that have been freeze-dried because I never tried them. And then I said, what's your favorite thing? And she said, well, I like these. And I cannot remember what they were called. Peanut butter bars, I think is what it was. Um, they were the little striped white candies, brown stripes, and they're white. 
And so I love anything peanut butter. And I said, okay, I'm going to get one of those too. So they were in a little container about that tall, I guess. The way I described it to me, Carl, is it was like the size of a worm container. <laughs> if you've ever bought worms for fishing or whatever, they're in about the same size container as that freeze-dried candy was. So I couldn't wait to try it. I bought the um, candy from her. We go over and we find us somewhere to eat. Oh, my goodness. And we sit down and I immediately, but while we were waiting on our food, I cracked open this candy. Well, I told y'all I'm not a candy fan, but I am um, like peanut butter fan. So I pop open these peanut butter. It's peanut butter logs. Peanut butter logs. I could not remember what mm -hmm. it was called. It's the peanut butter log candy. Okay, so it's freeze dried, mm -hmm. and it looks like this. It kind of looks like a frosted mini wheat cereal. It does. It doesn't look nothing like it does when it's. I can't remember what they look like. It's a. Uh, it's it's round. It's got brown stripes in it. So I'm gonna get you. Get back. You hear the crunch? Let me crunch one more. Crunch one more. Mmm. They're so good. Everybody there that was. Sitting near us, I said, you got to try this. you got to try this. It was awesome. And the thing about these are, I don't like these when when they're not freeze-dried. This is the first time I had them, but this, if you were to give me a pack of these, I would throw them away. Uh, I do not like these, but the freeze-dried ones? Oh, my gosh. I got to put them up. It was they're so good. so good. Also, to give you a perspective... Everybody knows what a Skittle looks like. This is a freeze-dried Skittle. <laughs> and the freeze-dried takes all the moisture out of it. So that's why it lasts forever. If you, if you freeze-dry food and put it in the Mylar bags they come with, it'll last up to 25 years. So and she so, just put one of these little decadent, is that how you say it? Desiccant? That's silicone gel. She calls it a desiccant. That's what I, she called it. I don't know what that's silicone. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's a desiccant. Well, I could see that if I wanted. To. That's silicone gel to get moisture out. Yeah, but look right there. I what does that say? That. I don't even try. You need to go get your camera and enlarge it. <laughs> but look, this is a skittle, and it's just it is. Do you know like those um those um peppermints that are the oh, big yes, ones? Those are my favorite. That, that are just like crunchy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? That's what this is like, except it's in a Skittle. And they're so it good. It sounds like the peanut butter log when it you does. eat it. It does. It is so good. It does not stick in your teeth at it all. It doesn't stick in your teeth at all, which is crazy. And I don't like, I, I told y'all, I don't like the candy kind of stuff. But I like this it's because crazy. I like the, I don't, I don't want to eat it, but I like the, the texture of this a lot better. It is so... Now, where's that other one? It's right here. And this is more Skittles. Okay, so so she gave us this one. Yeah. Because she wanted us to try some... Different flavors. Some different flavors. That's but right. y'all, isn't that pretty? They had the Jolly Ranchers, and I wish we would have bought those. But y'all know what a Jolly Rancher looks like. After she freeze-dried it, it was the size of a tennis ball. And you know what she told me she did? <laughs> she had to cut them in half. She uses quail egg scissors. Oh, really? Yes, and that's how she cuts them in half. They're huge. So and I, I say just put my ball. quail egg scissors in the pantry yeah. today because I have some because we're going to freeze dry some. We're going to give it a shot. It's more like the size of a golf ball. So that little Jolly Rancher cut in half the size of a golf ball. It's crazy. It so, is the same texture as popcorn. That's that's about right. So um, while she didn't ask me to say anything, yeah. I think the stuff's cool. It is cool. And she will ship it. So I told her I would tell you guys her we'll information. Um, well, she only does Facebook. Oh, okay. So it's called Deep South Sugar Shack. Deep South Sugar Shack. And um, gosh, I can't see that. Facebook. It's so weird. Deep I mean, South Sugar Shack. And she'll ship it. She says she'll ship it anywhere in the United States. I don't know if that'll focus or not, but it's weird. Very weird. But it's so good. It's and she so didn't good. ask me to do that. Yeah. But I think it's cool. 
So now I'm trying to get um, Nick and Zoe <laughs> over at Chestnut Hills to well, get them a freeze dry. I will say this. Nick told me, and he said it was one of the first ones that sold out because it wasn't even there. Y'all know that candy, the bit of honey? Yeah, I said that while you were gone. Oh, did you? I don't even like that candy. I don't but, know what it could taste like. But Nick said it was awesome. So if it's that awesome, Nick yeah. needs to buy well, Zoe one of them. I told Zoe she could freeze dry them whoopie pies, and they could last for 25 years. I mean, really? <laughs> We could handle anything as long as we had a whoopie pie. Oh, man. But, y'all, that's the coolest thing. It, I want to pull our freeze dryer out and just start experimenting. Yeah. Uh -uh, puppies. Y'all hitting the table. Um, I'm really excited about just trying different things. Don't, yeah. You don't have to do that. She's, She's okay. The camera shaking, Come baby. here, baby. Nobody minds. Come here. Nobody cares. If the camera's shaking. Oh, oh goodness. goodness. Did I hurt you? Yeah, but um, now that was our life. I know. But he did it because Gidget was over there. But that is some cool stuff. Is that yes. freeze dry? And she had stuff like, like oh, okra. Yeah. And she had bananas. Oh, right. But that stuff we've tried before. We have oh, bought oh, freeze dried oh, okra before oh, and we freeze dried our own. We freeze dried strawberries. We freeze dried the bananas. Uh, we've done peaches. Hey, hey, hey. hey y'all going to have to go downstairs now, okay? Arlo, I know. Um, and um, and we loved all that. Figs is one of our favorite things. But uh, right when we got into freeze drying is when we had to move, pack up everything, and move That's over here. That's what I said. I said I, we were yeah. this close yeah. to trying candy. Right. But now we got the garden going. And I've had a lot of people say, well, what are y'all going to do with the garden? And uh, we got so much stuff. Well, right now, though, our garden now, our winter garden, is going to be a lot of root vegetables that will store for a long time. So I'm not worried about those. And then greens, uh, you know, like I said in our talk yesterday, you know, greens, you'll go out there and get you a sack full of turnip greens or collard greens, and then you go put them in the pot and cook them. And it might be a half a cup. Yeah. So <laughs> They the cook greens, down to nothing. The greens cook down to nothing. So we'll, we'll eat the stew out of the greens. Yeah, I, but I'm we not, may we may try experiment and freeze drying some of that stuff just to see what happens. I'm curious. Well, I got my friend Google out today. Did you? And I googled freeze drying collard greens. Yeah. And really, nothing came up. So we may be the first. We may be the first. <laughs> we could freeze dry cornbread, and we could freeze dry collard greens, and oh, we could ship gracious. it to all of y'all. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> it could be a <laughs> cog hill. Plate <laughs> right at your doorstep. You know what I'm thinking though? And so we could freeze dry whoopie pie for your dessert. <laughs> we could add it all together yeah. like a TV dinner. That's right. Yeah. You, I'm, you know what I'm thinking though? You know how big a collard green is? How many collard greens would he have to freeze dry? And you know what? <laughs> you really don't need to stack stuff no, in the freeze dryer. Yeah. So I'm thinking like <laughs> if we had that freeze dryer slap full of collard green leaves. And we cooked it up. It would probably cook down to about this size. <laughs> you may be right. I think I'm right. Yeah. I think that would be the whole problem. I think you're right. Oh. Now, we might find yeah. that collard greens freeze dry like kale. And we might have collard green chips. Ooh. Instead of, you know, freeze dry kale is good. It is good. Just like freeze-dried okra is good. That's right. Yeah. So we could eat it like a snack instead of cooking in a pot. That's a good idea. Good we'll see. Because we got Swiss chard and we got, um, uh, uh, gosh, my mind went like uh, collard greens, all tarp turnip greens. We got all those. And then, you know, we got lots of broccoli and collard. Ooh, broccoli and, call and uh, Mary, cauliflower may be great freeze-dried. Mary freeze thinks that her... Zerk, yeah, he we call him the broccoli boy because he loves broccoli. That's the cockatiel, yes. Yeah. That Zerk would like freeze dried broccoli, My and it would be much better for him coming out of our garden than it would oh, go yeah, to the grocery absolutely. store and buying it. So, if we could do that and put it in a mylar bag, and you know, Zerk could live off broccoli for the next 25 years. <laughs> Speaking of the garden, did Mary call tell you? No, I should have got her to tell you. So I go out to the garden every day. And I don't. And then, y'all, yesterday morning I went out there and just peeked at it because it I say yesterday morning it was dark, mm -hmm. but I still peeked at it and I couldn't tell. And we had all that rain yesterday. 
like it is now, just a steady, just a steady nice rain. This morning I went out there, and y'all, that garden, I swear it has grown a foot since I looked at it last. And I took Mary Carl, because Mary Carl ain't been out there in about three days, because she helped me plant right. onions, leeks, and garlic. That's right. And um, so she said, Daddy, <laughs> she what in believe the it. world? She said, look how big it's gotten. I said, I know, baby girl. Look at it. <laughs> and um, she she loves gardening. You know it? Yeah, she does. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you ask kids to do, and they kind of shrug their shoulders and don't want to do it. Yes. But I can tell you this. Anytime Jason mentions helping him, well, she's pretty giddy at helping him do anything. But, you know, there's still that you can tell. Not yeah. really two inches right, right, doing right. it, but I'll do it anyway. But you don't have to ask her twice. She might beat you to the garden if you ask her to help you. She loved, and yeah, she helped me, y'all. She helped me plant 150 onions, 50 leeks, and 100 bulbs of garlic. Just me and her. We got it planted. We got it knocked out, too. What was I doing? Oh. Ooh, you were doing something inside. Yeah, I was. I was doing something else in, inside. And if they can do something by themselves, yeah. then, you know, I don't really like the garden too much. <laughs> I just hang out and act like I do, but um, yeah, if they want to do that, then that's yeah. something that they can do together and I'm content. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, and I love her going out there with me. So, cause oh, I yeah. know she likes it and, and um, I just, I, I want her to keep that passion going. That's right. That's she right. loves out there going out the garden. She can't wait him. to have some fresh food from the garden. Yeah. She loves greens too. Yeah. She yeah. loves greens. Yeah. and. Of course, we do, too. Oh, yeah, we do, too. The biggest thing about greens is you got to clean the stew out of them. Yeah, you do. That's the biggest thing about greens. And the best way to do it is... In your outdoor sink. <laughs> oh, in the outdoor sink. That is awesome. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself, we're not putting those greens in my nice... you got to wash them three times. You do. Or wash they're going to be three greedy. Times. They, that's the best way to do it. And the best way to do it is to fill up the, your sink is all the water in it and put your greens in there and just kind of work them like this Drain and, then, it. and then the dirt's going to sink to the bottom and your greens are going to float to the top and if you do that three times you'll you'll pretty much get dirt off of them because what happens is, is when it rains it hits and it splashes that dirt back up on them that's right and um they will get gritty on you so yes. you got to be that's that's the biggest thing about greens that's wash right wash them three times and it, i tell you it is it's time consuming. Time consuming. And it's not going to take you an hour. No. You know, probably 10 minutes, but still, you know, washing greens, you know, it, um, and I'm sure it's not everybody's favorite thing, but three times. You got to do it three times. Three times. Three, three times. times. But, and it, we just cook ours in stock. We do. Yeah. We, we, um, we like to use, we like to use chicken stock or vegetable stock. Right. And, um, just really nothing to it, y'all. We don't add, you can put your your fat back, as Southerners call it, mm -hmm. your piece of fat, piece of ham hock. Ham hock. Um, ham hock's really popular. Or you, some people put bacon in there. Some people cook them in grease or bacon grease and that kind of thing. We don't. We don't. Big, big stock pot. Simple, simple, simple. Chicken stock or vegetable stock. Bring Greens. it to a bowl first. Bring your stock Bring to your a stock bowl. Bring stock to the bowl. And then salt it. And then put your greens in mm -hmm. there. And now when you put your greens in there, you're going to think, oh, my gracious. Got way too much. Got you can't even put much. the top on. No. And you don't need to put the top on. Because you're going to be like, I can't even get my top on here. You're going to bring it to a bowl. And as it's bringing to a bowl, you're going to push them down yeah. with your wooden spoon. Just push them down. Get them in that water. Get them in the water. They're going to start cooking down almost immediately. So once they cook down and you got more room, guess what you do? You pile some more on it's the top and you do there. the That's same right. thing. Mm -hmm. And you just let them simmer down until all that goodness has gotten soft and gooey and mushy. And it sounds disgusting, but it's wonderful. That's when the cornbread comes into play. That's, That's why you have cornbread with your collard greens. That's just right. Just because when you get your plate in there, all that goodness is going to be sitting on that plate. The juices, or we call it pot liquor. And you can take your cornbread and get all that up. And Jason <sighs> says, sop it up. Sop it up. Sop it up. Y'all, guess what we had for dinner tonight? Ooh! We had cornbread. We had cornbread bread, and black eyed peas. Black eyed peas, cornbread, and some baked okra. That was it. That was, that was so it. Good. That's all That's all we had. And that's that's how we enjoy our mm, it was good. southern dinners. 
and sweet tea. Mm -hmm. sweet and tea. Sweet tea. I'm no longer buying Milo sweet tea. We're out I of the know, camper. I know that their stock is probably down, mm -hmm. and they're needing some customers <laughs> because we quit because we're not, I'm in not a buying a gallon a week like I was. We're not in a camper. But I have found since I back to making sweet tea again mm -hmm. that you and Mary Carl consume much more than when I bought Milo's. Okay, so I make a half a gallon at a time. Mm -hmm. Milo's comes in a gallon. Right. One gallon would last us a week of mm -hmm. Milo's. One half a gallon lasts us a day mm -hmm. of mine. So I think that's saying that my sweet tea is better than Milo's. Sure it is. Well, yeah. <laughs> sure it is. Mary Carl told me <laughs> that my sweet tea was better than Main Street's. Ooh. So, and my that's cornbread, good. too. My cornbread. She said the I made the best good. cornbread. The cornbread is good. I'm not going to lie. And Jason made a little reel about cornbread the other day. And I did. Some folks got to saying that our cornbread wasn't Southern. Well, well, there were some people, too, that got confused. Listen, there is at least 1.3 million different ways to make cornbread here in the South. And each, each grandma makes it different. And no grandma that's passed it down to the next generation... Nobody measures anything. Well, I think what confused people was that's the, what I was getting the, to. Okay, your recipe you got it online. You 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 call for an egg, and the one I made in the reel, you didn't put an egg in, mm -hmm. and it's just like if Mary Carl likes a duck egg. In. That's right. So if we have a duck egg, we put it in there. If you don't have the egg, you don't put it in there. Either way, it's still good. It's still good. Yeah, it, we make it work. Um, it, My favorites with buttermilk. And Mary Carl doesn't like it with Mary buttermilk. Mary Carl doesn't like the buttermilk. So it's palatable for Jason either oh, way, with good. or without buttermilk. Mm -hmm. So we make it to where everybody likes it, and we do it without buttermilk for the most part. And I don't like the buttermilk. That's how my nanny did it, and that's how it just it just has that little twang to it. And I like it with buttermilk. Now, your daddy makes cornbread totally different than what I do. Does. He mixes flour and cornmeal yep, together. He does. And it makes a big cake-like pan. Which we don't particularly. It's not super thick. It's it, thick. I mean, it's like cake. And um, yeah, I've had some that's really like cake, and Daddy's is not like that. There's some that's really like cake and has a lot of sugar in it, which I don't like. Yeah, I don't I don't like. And there's some people that like to add sugar to theirs. I personally don't like the sugar in mine. Well, you know what I found today when I was What's going that? through some of my boxes? Okay, so in high school, I had to take a home economics class. And I don't think that they... They're all... trying to bring that back. I saw an article about it. They're trying to get schools to bring home ec back. And well, it I was a good thing. They need to. Well, I was in eighth grade when I took the home economics class. Right. And I had a teacher named Miss Raven. Mm -hmm. And Miss Raven, while she was one of the hardest teachers I ever had... She was one of my most memorable and favorite now. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how it goes. That's it, yeah. When you think back and you think of a hard teacher, you realize that they weren't being mean, that they were trying to teach you something. That's right. And she wasn't hard as a home economics teacher. She taught English as well. So um, she was the first one that taught me anything about like reading a recipe and cooking. You know, of course, my mama let me help her, but it wasn't like you were on your own. I was on my own in home economics. Right. And the first cornbread that I ever made was in her class. And I'm not going to lie to you. That cornbread recipe is pretty darn good. Hers is good, too, because you've made hers before. But it's totally different than it's mine. It's totally different. And then, you know, my one of my best friends is Chef Scott Peacock, who is one of the most renowned Southern chefs in the country. And he makes cornbread several different ways. And none Probably of those, depending on how what he's cooking with it. And none of those are like that. Yeah. Like I said, there's 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 a gazillion <laughs> ways to make cornbread, and none of them are wrong. That's right. There is no right or wrong. Yeah. But what we did with the reel was showed how I made cornbread. So we weren't saying that way the way you may make it is yeah, wrong. Right. It's just the way I make cornbread. Mm -hmm. So Miss Raven's recipe, you took um Crisco. Yes. Cooking. That's what my daddy's doing. Lard? Uses. Is it, that what it is? No, it's grease. It's cooking just, grease. It's but it's in a solid yeah. solid form. That's what daddy still uses. And she used muffin tins. Mm -hmm. And so you took a, a teaspoon 
of that Crisco and you put it in each 12 muffin tins and you let that get hot and then you mix up your mix and you put it, you know, mm -hmm. on top of the grease. And I have to share that recipe because it's, it's measurements, it's increments, you know, to where, um, it was teachable. And the, your recipe you put online was because you eyeballed, you just do it because yeah. you've done it so many times. Right. We kind of try to give you the best measurement we thought it was too, but it's still going to be good. That's right. It's still going to be good. Um, and as far as sweet tea goes, I don't have a recipe. I don't measure my sugar. I pour it in there because <laughs> I just about know how much it's going to take. <laughs> yeah. And then I don't use the same amount of water in my tea bags and I don't let it sit the mm -hmm. same amount of time every time. So, you know, it's just, I can show y'all what I do, but. Well. I tell you the worst cornbread that I, I, I think I could eat cornbread no matter who made it, but there was one I could not eat. And that was, we were at the house of blues. There's a restaurant called the house of blues. Yes. It was in got, Orlando. And I got cornbread and I'm thinking cornbread, right? Y'all. It was, it was, it was this thick. I think it was Jiffy Mix. And it was so sweet. It was like eating. That's what it was. It was like eating, what's the, uh, uh, a Betty Crocker chocolate or yellow cake mix. Without frosting. Without frosting on it. And I couldn't eat it. I just couldn't eat it. And then it was. Uh. Um, I saw somebody say on, on our comments on some, you know, mm -hmm. where you posted the reel about the cornbread yeah. that some people said, um, that they use Jiffy Mix. And then uh -huh. there were replies to those comments. Jiffy Mix isn't really cornbread. They mm -hmm. just market it as cornbread. I don't but think I've ever had Jiffy Mix. You, you had it at the house of blues. Is that what that was? <laughs> it's really sweet, I think. Uh -huh. And it's, um, I know my friend Kelly used to make a corn casserole and she used, the and Jiffy, she mix. used Jiffy Mix. So I know what that tastes yeah. like. And that's what it was like. Okay. It's a sweet, it's not like cornbread that we have here at Coghill Farm. <laughs> well, I, think, I think, I think maybe, maybe it sounds like it's hard or something, but I think, you know, since it's cornbread, it seems like it's just something that's passed down. Yeah, it is. You know, it's just passed down and each family's, each family does it just a little bit different than the other family. It's just passed down from generation to generation, which is super cool. You know what? It? it is. And I, I make it just about like my mama does. Uh -huh. Um, However, once I got out of the house and my dad passed away, my mama kind of quit cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, she doesn't enjoy cooking. She does what it takes to provide for herself and she doesn't enjoy it. So she doesn't cook. Right. But she tells me that I make the best cornbread. And I'm thinking back to myself, well, it's the same cornbread you used to make. And she never measured anything either. But I think she doesn't just doesn't remember right you know um, I, you. I just kind of tweaked it a little bit as to what we like what our family like yeah. we like it really thin now mama you know sometimes hers would come out thicker and that's normal that's just that's because you don't measure anything. you don't measure it you think <laughs> you think you've got it the right thickness that's right and it might not be but yeah. um yeah she she thinks i make the best cornbread but kudos to her because that's where i learned that's where you learned <laughs> that's where i learned yeah. Um, I want to tell a little funny. Okay. I told it yesterday at the um, event that we spoke at, and I think y'all might enjoy hearing a little funny too. <laughs> I'm sure they will. Do you know what it is? I got an idea. So we've been working on the party garden. And that is our parterre garden, because as you guys know, I'm a bilingual wordsmith, and that's my that's French. Parterre is French for those that don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I think I think parterre, I, you know, here I'm saying it, and I don't really know what parterre means, but I think it stands for French formal garden. I think that's what that stands for. But parterre is just one word, and French formal garden is three, so I could be totally wrong with that. So while we don't speak any fancy languages around here, <laughs> when I refer to the party garden, I'm referring to the French formal garden on the side of Cog Hill. Right. Farm. That's it. And on our side over there, we got our porch over there, which is like my favorite area. I, I cannot tell y'all <laughs> how much I enjoy that side porch over there. I'm using it in the house. I watch football games. We got a TV set up out there and I just watch football games. I don't even, I don't even come inside hardly for anything. I could not find Jason night before last. Yeah. I don't even know what day that was. <laughs> um, Friday. Yes. And I looked everywhere. I hollered. I sent him a message. He mm -hmm. didn't respond. I thought to myself, where is the man? Where's the man? Right. I found him. 
It was outside, sitting on the porch. I love that area. It's so nice. And right now, the weather is so mild. It's getting a little cooler, but still so mild. I just love it out there. I get the, out, the sounds, the outdoor sounds, the fresh air. I love it. And then our parterre or our party garden. It's right there. It's like an extension. That's right. It's, it's like an extension. an extension of that porch. And it's like one giant room back there. I just I love it. Absolutely love it. So this party garden has turned into a bigger bite out of the cookie than we thought it would be. So it, it, it's been a lot harder to make than it's I It's been the whole cookie. It hadn't it has, just been a bite. It has taken us, this is week three or four. <laughs> It, I mean, I, I think Jason I, gave up on videoing it because oh, I did. It was taking way too long. There's was, no way he could edit it. It would be like 15 videos, and I'm like, people are gonna get tired of watching us build this garden. Yeah. So I'm just gonna make one video of the garden once we get finished with it, and just put all the clips of us building it in it. And that way, it won't be they yep. won't get bored with this this parterre garden we got going on over here. This party side. garden. So, <laughs> so the. The party garden is looking looking pretty complete. It is. It's getting there. We um we built a fence in the front and the back. I know mm -hmm. y'all are probably like a fence. What are you building? You're just gonna have to see it for us have to, to, see it. to show you that. And I'll be coming soon. We're not finished with it yet. We're we, getting close though. We're we're almost finished. Yeah. So we have you saw the rose swag, mm -hmm. which was the first part that we completed. Well, those are big, like 10 foot posts. Mm -hmm. They're two foot in the ground. So they're 10 foot sticking out of the ground. And then there's that cable running from pole to pole where the roses are going to grow on. So when we got finished, the visual I had was we need lights. Yeah, we both we both had that same idea of those string lights, you know, the big bulb string lights that are pretty popular now. And just making a weave off the porch to the rose swag post and doing like a zigzag with those string lights. And we just thought it would just be beautiful and just light that area up. So and, we live in Chilton mm -hmm. County mm -hmm. and our near city is Clanton. And Clanton recently put those lights across their main street, which is Second Avenue. Mm -hmm. That's over the top of Main Street Cafe and, and that area there. Mm -hmm. And it looks really cool. It, it just, does. I mean, the downtown area of our, our county is just awesome. It's I mean, they beautiful. take wonderful care of it. They really do. It's so nice to see everybody coming together and making things work because it, it takes a village to make that kind of thing happen i tell you all the time they got the, the flowers down there absolutely gorgeous and i i, I told you the other a matter of fact it was yesterday i said i don't know who does those flowers that handles them but they're kudos to them it is gorgeous, and it is a mess of them there's it no is. way that's just one or two people it's it's an awesome beautiful, beautiful. sight so back to my story yeah. is we Decided we would put the lights up. And what we wanted to do was to run a cable. So I, we measured, we came up with what we thought we were going to need as far as materials go, because we wanted to run the cable and then hang the lights from the cable. Because mm -hmm. if you just hung the lights, it would be too much sag. We wanted it to be kind of, kind of tight. Semi-tight. Not like a guitar string. Yeah. No, yeah. Semi-tight. Yeah. So we ran all the cable and we got all of our eye hooks in. It even looked good with the cable. It did look good with the cable. I mean, you're thinking, how in the world does a cable look good? <laughs> but it did. It looked good just yeah. stringing across there. Okay, so I had bought um, 13 packs of lights, mm -hmm. of party lights for the party garden. Mm -hmm. So what I read was that they could take up to 424 watts on a single plug-in. Yes. And... What I read was that they were 24 watts per string. Per string. So if you do the math, that's 18 strings that you can connect together. I could string together 18, 18. strings on one single plug and plug in them all together to make it light up. And we had 13. We had 13. So we were five from the max. Five from the max. Mm -hmm. So I start unpacking them. You're on a ladder. Yep. And we string and we string and we string and we string four together. Yes. So we go to string number five in. And they're they're plugged in because we're making sure things going. And we wanted to see it. We wanted yeah, to see what it was like. So we were impatient. So we, we go to plug number five in mm -hmm. and lights go out. Yep. So as we plug number five in, all the lights go out. And I knew exactly what had happened. 
I said it blew a fuse because those things got those little fuses in the ends of them. And lo and behold, I was right. I, I opened the thing up, had an extra fuse in there. I swapped it out, put the extra fuse, put it back in there. And all five came on. All five came on. So as I was unplugging it, um, it was not pushed in all the way. It, it seemed like it because the, the cover is over the plug. It's got one of those in-use covers because it's the outside plug and it's a GFI plug. And so it was all in there. And my thinking was is that it was wiggling. And we put that in there and wiggled, and that's what caused the fuse to short. And my thinking was, hey, let's go ahead and just plug them all in, then, then plug, plug it, it in. Because if it keeps wiggling in there with us moving around and stuff, it's going to blow into the fuse. Then I have to get it back out. I'm going to rob one out of another one. So let's just do that. And that's what we did. So we strang all 13 of them. All 13 of them. We strang all 13 of them. Mind you, each light has a hook on it. Mm -hmm. Each light has a hook on it. So we're Jason's going on the ladder. I'm handing them to him. He's hooking them. We're going. We're going. And it takes probably two hours. It was two hours later. We got it all put together. And it was like, you know, you're lighting the big christmas tree in Times square well it was like the griswolds on christmas vacation he had all the mics in the house and he goes to plug it in and just, just boom comes on for a second and poof, went back off and we went, went <laughs> and we went we hung our heads down oh. and we we said to ourselves something's not right something's not right. I said, Jason, could it be the breaker? And he was like, no, bro, it's not the breaker. It's not the breaker. It's not the breaker. And I knew it had blown another fuse. So I looked and lo and behold, it blew a fuse. It blew a fuse. So I did like any man would do. Any man would do. I went over there. I got an old piece of conduit. So I cut me a piece of wire off of it, stripped it back. And this is why men don't live as long as women. And I got this, and where the fuse went, I took that piece of wire, and I stuck it in there, shut the cover, plugged it in, and guess what? That first strand came on, but then the next one blew a fuse. So my little makeshift little thing, it worked. It worked. And my first thinking was, my first thought was, I could do that 13 times. <laughs> I could do that 13 times, and they would all work. But then, you know, I'm like, reality sits in and is like, Jason, there's a reason why they got this fuse in there and they don't want you to to, to go around that fuse because that's what I was doing. And in the gonna, meantime, you're going to melt the whole thing and the house is going to catch on fire and all that kind of good stuff. In the meantime, I'm sitting on the ground in the grass mm -hmm. reading the instructions. Yeah. The instructions tell me that 24 watts was an example Yes, and I went back to the, where you bought them from and read all the fine print, and it said four strands was the max, and we had 13 of them plugged in together. Plugged in together, all hung up, all <laughs> beautiful in the party garden, ready to be lit, ready to party, <laughs> and there was no party. Yeah, there was no party. And we were tired because not only had we strung all the lights that day, we had planted seven um, plants. We had planted seven We plants. put weed mat down all around the oh, party garden. Oh, that's right. We set two six by six posts. Yep, because we extended the rose swag even further. We put all the mulch out. We did. Around the party garden. <laughs> and we strained the lights for two hours. Oh, man. So, they didn't work. They didn't work. So, we go to Google and we say, long strand of light commercial grade <laughs> commercial grade commercial grade <laughs> so we found one that could take 400 foot yeah. in one strand we only needed 200 foot that's right so we ordered them yep but guess what we had to do then we had to go take them all down. We had to take them all down because we were going to send them back and get our money back on them. Man. It wasn't that big of a deal taking them down, but boxing them up was I the couldn't box them up. It was tedious. And it usually was. I don't do well with things like that. But it was it was two plastic containers and they had to be in there just perfect. And we had to roll them up. Yeah, because I mean, was, it was a it was a mess. It I was, was mess. putting them in there, and they were popping back out like a jack in the box. They, I was like, I, 
you were like, I've done three and you're still on the one. I was like, you, you, I'm going to let you do them. I, I did. <laughs> I need to go do something else. <laughs> I boxed up all 13 while Jason went and got a shipping label printed off for us to send them back. That's right. And we ordered the correct one. So Tuesday. Yes. Tuesday afternoon. Same day the cabinets are coming. Well, doors. supposedly. <laughs> Um, we are going to have lights for the party garden. And I'm thinking that once we get the party garden lit up, that we're going to sit out there and we're going to do a live. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't mean during the day. No. I mean during the night. Yes. When the party garden's lit. Yeah, I think so. Yes. I think that's a good idea because I really think it looks beautiful. It's turned out better than I anticipated. It's, tell you. It looks really good. It was a lot good. harder than I anticipated. That cookie was big and we... Ate the whole thing. Yeah, because uh, geometry is not my strong point. Well, I just, I think that you were making it a little harder than what it was. But you wanted it to be perfect. Yeah. And I commend you for that. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. I'm just Ooh. glad that we didn't put like a big 100 amp fuse in those lights. Because I don't want to go back to living in a camper. Well, it, it, the, the bigger fuse crossed my mind, but I'm thinking, where in the world are you going to find a glass fuse that's like this little, that's for Christmas lights, that's bigger than seven amps? And you're not. You're not. What? I bet the country store had it. I bet they did, too. <laughs> I bet they did, too. I bet they even had a, a plug that would have allowed us to plug them all in without changing the fuse. <laughs> What do you think? Oh, I don't know, but it may have that fuse. So that was Thursday. No, that was Friday evening yep. when that happened. And uh, Saturday, of course, we were getting up early to go to the, the homesteaders meet up. But we had gotten over our pity party and, and, and we realized that Tuesday's a new day. Oh, yeah. We wouldn't. <laughs> our lip wasn't poked that long. It was upsetting, mm -mm. though, to know we had done all that work. And <laughs> And the lights didn't come on. Oh, man. We were so excited, though. I mean, it was like we almost dark, you know. And, oh, yeah, it was. It was. We're stringing them up. And we, I'm we just it was wait. just like the Griswolds. I mean, it was. I did, all I needed was somebody to say, drum roll, please. And it, and and then start singing the Star Spangled Banner and all that. But yeah. it, it didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we plugged them in and they went. <laughs> Oh me! Carlo said he liked that little noise. He did. So you want to take some questions, or you need to edit? I need to edit. Okay. So this week, if you didn't watch me, Carl and I, we did a video on a uh, pigeon mm -hmm. palace makeover. That's right. So um, go check out Mrs. Cog Hill and watch that video because I'm thinking about going to big box store tomorrow and buying every tablecloth they have and doing the rest of these coops because it turned out phenomenal. It did turn out phenomenal. And I would like to say, too, that we you know how a lot of people worried about the lights in that coop. <gasps> That's a good idea. And I'm so glad you said yeah, that. Yeah, those are pretty much the string lights they were putting up outside. They're, they're outdoor lights. And LED. They're, they're LED. They don't get hot. It's got a hard plastic cover on it and there's zero heat on it whatsoever and they're weatherproof so, and they're weatherproof so yeah. i mean you have to imagine that there's no heat that comes out of them because if they're weatherproof and, plus and they're lit up there, they've been in there for how long we have had we had those lights at little cog yeah but they've been hanging up in that pigeon loft forever forever up against the wall yeah before we even put the the, the thing down and two that video was actually two weeks ago. It was. And so they've been they've been up there for going on three weeks now with no issues at all. So it doesn't get hot. So it yeah. won't never uh, don't want to worry about that. And I hate that we didn't address that in the didn't video. Cross mind, though, but, did it? but there was one comment after another yeah. after another about y'all are gonna burn the pigeon palace down. <laughs> And we're not going to burn it down. <laughs> we're not burning it down. <laughs> oh, man. They did, I mean, I could grab it and hold it with my hand. Yeah, it doesn't get hot at all. There's like mm -hmm. zero heat. Zero heat, yeah. The, the technology today with these lights is phenomenal. It is. It's crazy. I mean, and they last forever. Yeah. yeah. We could have them sitting on this couch and they wouldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, y'all check out our video if you didn't because it was a coop makeover that just any of you could do. Yeah, you could. Any of you could really do. Really could. And I'm so glad that, that she and I came across that idea because, I mean, it's, it's just great and it's so easy. It looks beautiful, too. 
And then stay tuned tomorrow morning because mm -hmm. Jason has a video that will be coming out. Video coming out. And two, I would like to say thank you, everybody, uh, that's been giving us feedback on the YouTube shorts. You Facebook people, y'all been seeing the reels for a while now. And by the looks of my analytics, I'm getting somewhere between a 95 to a 98 percent um, thumbs up rate on those. So, hey, that's uh, pretty good. And I enjoy making them. And uh, and I've had a lot of had a lady yesterday said I don't like the shorts, and I'm like, oh, well, I, I thank you for your feedback and everything. I said, but just remember, the short is in lieu of, of our regular video. I'm only posting those on the days that I don't post a long regular video. So it's not going to take over the long videos or anything like that. It's just extra out there because I can't do a long video every single day. And so, and I like doing them. They're fun. And I, and I, I wanted to ask her, have you watched one of my latest shorts? Yeah. I really did because uh, I, I think that she may have a mindset or I, I'm putting words in her mouth. She may not, she may have watched them and not like them, but I think maybe some people have an idea what a short or a reel typically looks like. And I think mine are, are a little bit different. Mine is like an actual long form video shrunk down to one minute. That's right. Yeah. So you're a pretty cool, dude. <laughs> you're a pretty awesome lady. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, man. So um, somebody just asked, did we cut the lights off at night out in the pigeon loft? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. We do. Every yep. night yep. lights go out. Yep. Pigeons have to sleep too. That's right. And so do we. Yeah, we so, do too. <laughs> guys <laughs> as always thank y'all so much for hanging out with us i know y'all could be anywhere but here and we appreciate that so so much and go, we'll catch y'all on the next one y'all be good go check these out hoghillfarm.com <laughs> get you one today while they're hot <laughs>